by Huang Ying Oke, the Anglo Tongshu, Lauren Wilkin. Now let's give a warm welcome to Lauren Wilkin, the co-founder of Fox.
this is a time you know you can really build your brand. You can really have like uh, everything is there. You have like the product, you have the market, you have the, the right time. Everything is there, and that's what happened for us. So it was in uh, 2012. You know, it was already like the we were you know designing much bigger phone, like smartphone, as we know today, uh, this kind of big phones. And I was selling them uh, in Europe, I was selling that, that model in, uh, in Latin America to some big brands, uh, local big brands in, um, in, in, in that uh, area. And at the same time, we got, you know, it was the iPod Nano, it was a tiny display, and it was end of life. So Apple had this big, how to say, uh, stock of, of this uh, display, because they were putting it out of life. And the, the display manufacturer was LG. LG came to us and said, look, I have all this tiny display and I can give you a very good price. But you can imagine that at that time we were all designing big phones. No one cared. No one cared about this uh, kind of uh, tiny display anymore. We are all designing big uh, smartphones. Anyway, we connected uh, this tiny display on the motherboard of uh, the display. And that was really the eureka moment for us. We really realized that we saw, this is a real photo uh, I took at that time, uh, we saw like a thumbnail version of Android uh, running on, on it. And from that, basically, we decided to redesign the PCB, to make it as small as possible, to fit. And I was a B to me guy. I just knew, like uh, you know, I, my customers. I was we were like uh, building phones at Ulux, uh, some ODM in Shenzhen, uh, famous ODM. But we are in, uh, in the B to B world. We are not at all in the B to C. So I, we designed that, and we had no idea what to do. So we started to show to some of our customers, and no one believed it. So I decided uh, to launch this project name called Omate uh, with my partner and the name we call it the True Smart. Again, I'm a B2B guy. I have no idea how to launch a uh, you know, brand. I have no connection in uh, the press, in the media, in the, uh, you know, like in the distribution because it was a customer of my customer. And at the same time, uh, there is a new channel called like a crowdfunding and we heard like about Kickstarter, we heard about Indiegogo, and we said, okay, let's give it a try. And I had a marketing project of 2,000 US dollars, so I just made a video with it, and I had no idea what I was doing, just putting this video, all my friends were on that video. And after one month, we, we, we managed to, to raise a million US dollars. So that was the beginning of a totally different story for, for me and for the company. But I will go quick on that. It looks pretty cool. It looks, uh, you know, like a good achievement. We are very excited. We have like 4,000, um, you know, like customers, hackers. But I had to deal with all this branding story. I had to deal with all, uh, you know, teaming, you know, dealing with all these journalists, this media. That was, uh, I had to deal also with the payment, um, you know, receiving all this payment and managing our own website to get like, uh, to, to make like running the business. That was pretty difficult. I go through a different phase, but just to explain to you that I've seen it from my own eyes in the mobile phone design industry, what Apple did to many mobile phone brands, including my former um, employer, uh, Philips Mobile. You know, at that time we were pretty big. After Apple, you know, they killed not only Philips, they killed many, many, many companies, and they disrupted the industry. So, after two years, Apple came with an Apple Watch that probably many of you guys have uh, on your wrist. And then I decided, okay, I know what will happen. If I focus on doing the same strategy, doing like uh, trying to compete with Apple, I will die. So, it's a kind of a moment where you have to decide, uh, it's a pivot or die. And that's what we did to, to survive. So today, uh, I... I skipped so many pivots, we did many, many things, but uh, in 2016, I had one of my customers working with some of our device. Um, it was a kid, kid smartwatch, and then he kept 
telling me in a, on an exhibition, he said, I'm using your, your watch uh, to, to do it actually for people 18 years old and above. That's our customers. So I was not very happy about it because it's not, it's probably the less, you know, sexy things, uh, sexy segment you have to work on. But that totally saved uh, my company. And so in 2016, we started designing smartwatches for old people. And at the same time, um, so we, this is our wonderful latest design that we launched. Uh, we also did like some other segment, like loan workers and so on. So long story short, um, I've been through all of that from arriving, this is the first photo I took uh, arriving in China, uh, then working on mobile phone design up to launching Omanit, uh, eventually got married uh, in with my partner, and I, I even met in Shenzhen uh, Tim Cook of uh, Apple, so I could tell him I, I took him a job. I think I told him I was very happy to meet the CEO of Huawei, and that made him uh, love quite well. Um, then I launched many kind of product, and in 2016, another story also happened uh, with a bunch of friends. Eventually got married, also got kids. Uh, and um, um, in 2016, which is probably the most interesting part for you, uh, with a bunch of friends, we launched Oakley. And here is a quick video.
were already, you know, 100 million dollar companies. Today, these companies are trillion dollar companies. Like Apple is a, is a three trillion dollar company. This is extremely hard. I'm always like amazed by people who try to compete with these companies. They think they are very brave, but um, I'm not that brave. I want to, you know, to to find the niche to be to be like a more influential in what I'm doing, rather than trying to do a company that will die eventually against these big brands. And in this case, if you take for clean, we came with an idea to disrupt the oral care industry. But in this case, the Google and the Apple of the oral care industry are called uh, you know, Philips or Oral-B. They are still very big companies, but they are much smaller than the Apple and the Google of, uh, of this world. So we believe we can bring like, even more innovation and I uh, invite you all to, to check and if you want to know more about our product, uh, let me know and I'm happy to, to share more insights with you. Thank you.